Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's a live action with CGI animated version of the 1991 original animated classic from Disney, along with the French story by Jeanne Marie Le Prince de Beaumont, called Beauty and the Beast, which stars Emma Watson from the Harry Potter films, as well as the Purse of Being a Wallflower, Dan Stevens, Luke Evans, Kevin Klein. It's been a lot of stuff with films like uh, A Fish Called Wanda, The Lovely, um, as well as uh, The Big Chill, Grand Canyon, and several other films he's been in. Josh Gag who did the voice of Olaf from the film Frozen. Ewan McGregor, been known for his film uh, Train Spotting, which he's also in the sequel as well, which surprisingly enough came out the same weekend as this movie. He's also in the Star Wars prequels and other films too. Stanley Tucci, a great actor. He was in Beethoven and and he was in the, the Terminal and all these other ones. Even the, the Devil Wears Prada. Audra McDonald. Google Bata Raw. E. McKellen from the Lord of the Rings movies as well as the X Men films. And uh, some other films he's been in. And Emma Thompson, who's been in other films, mostly from the um, the Merchant and Ivory produced films like Howard's End, Sense of Sensibility, uh, The Remains of the Day, and she was also in movies like uh, Stranger Than Fiction. Uh, she was even in one of the Harry Potter films too, uh, the sequels. It's written by Stephen Chbosky, who also did Perks of Being a Wildflower with Emma Watson. Evan Spilito Topolis, who had wrote the screenplays from other films like uh, you know, Tinkerbell and the Lost Treasure, The Little Mermaid, Ariel's Beginning, um, he also worked on The Jungle Book 2, The Lion King, One and a Half. Uh, he also worked on the live action version of Hercules with Dwayne Johnson, aka The Rock. Yeah, that one. And he even did Battle for Terra. Uh, and it's directed by Bill Condon, who had directed uh, films like. Gods and Monsters, which he wrote the screenplay. He did the sequel to Candyman, Farewell to the Flesh, Kinsey with Liam Neeson, Dream Girls. Also did Mr. Holmes, and of course, the last two Twilight movies called Break and Dawn, which was really bad, by the way. What do you expect? It's Twilight. Uh, he also wrote screenplays for um, movies like FX2 and Strange Invaders come to mind, even Chicago. Now keep this in mind, this is a different adaptation of the French story, which also in turn is, is based on the original 1991 animated classics, so most of it will remain the same, but there's going to be some new additions in the film it's just to come to mind so I'm probably going to remember what what the film is really about so here we go so the movie begins set in France where we see the old beggar the skies um, by the beautiful enchantress who just met the prince who happens to be a spoiled selfish and arrogant man she lent him the, the Enchanted Rose as a gift. 
in order for her to have um, some shelter and and actually uh, stayed in in the castle but he turned her away just before she transformed herself into the enchantress as we know it the prince actually had begged her for forgiveness but it was too late because after that she transformed him into a hideous beast she gave him the magic mirror to view faraway events along with the rose and the rest of the crew had became all the accessories of, of any kind as we know it so in order for him to break the spell he must learn to love another so that means he needs to find a young woman in his life in order for him to become human again before the rose last petal falls so years later which is now being said in 1780 in a village known as Benouve in France we meet a young woman named Belle who's played by Emma Watson by the way who lives with her father Maurice who's, who's this time an artist and a tinkerer and he's played by Kevin Klein. so usual it's it's so we basically get to hear Belle singing that same song where she was just running around uh, the entire village you know just so she can go get a book now uh, yes there are complaints about uh, Emma Watson's singing ability and and I hate to say this but I'm pretty much with them on this one she wasn't uh, the best singer that we had to offer but I'm gonna explain to that later on in the review but anyway um, so then we meet uh, a former soldier who's also considered to be rude, arrogant, and narcissism named Gaston. Yeah, because now we know. And he's not even muscular this time around. He's played by um, Luke Evans, along with his uh, sidekick, who's goofy, but also his best uh, colleague, uh, LeFou. And now he's considered to be the first character to be gay, as we know it. I didn't buy that, too. I, I really didn't. I know how his character is, but, I mean, he's supposed to be goofy and all that. And, and the fact that he's hanging around with Gaston. I, I just really didn't buy this whole uh, PC that D Disney was trying to come up with. But on the other hand, though, it doesn't bother me, though, but of having a first gay character in a film. There's never wrong with having gay characters. Never, nothing in particular, but it's going to cause a firestorm for parents out there who doesn't want to see their kids actually seeing a character actually going around doing some really um, vulgar stuff or even the stuff in a ball, balling, uh, a guy actually kissing each other or any other kind. Um, and the fact that he's winking too, um, you know, so we're going to get to that. I didn't really buy that, so. but that's in my opinion. Yeah, but it, it didn't hurt the movie though, it just, it's just the way Disney really is. I mean, trying to be PC as in politically correct. Well, anyway, uh, back to that, um, in this one, um, Gaston, as usual, wants to fall in love with Belle in order for them to get married, but she refuses. So then, Maurice was on a trip to the market just so he could sell music boxes because he creates them. So he does. He's not an an actual inventor like like um, the 1991 film was when you know he gets to work on his co latest contraption where it's a woodcutter or at this rate a, a log cutter so in order for him to win at the fair so anyway so in this version he um, he sells music boxes with uh, his horse Philippe but unfortunately he was lost in the forest being attacked by wolves until he wants up um, staying over inside the castle so he gets to you know, try to find his way and, and just 
just having to stay and relax. But then he began to hear something suspicious, like someone was like speaking as he didn't know it, and then he decided he'll just he'll just um, run away and just uh, go back to his home. Also, the fact that uh, that Bell actually offered him to take a red rose uh, in the castle just before the beast had arrived. And by the way, the beast is played by Dan Stevens, who was also the prince. So then Bill found out that her father was missing. So she decided to go with Philippe all the way straight to the forest and into the castle. So that way he'll find his father just when the, he was already being held uh, in a dungeon. So then the beast showed up and decided to um, have Bill take his place. And yeah, there's another thing here too. What is with these controversies here with, with Disney? I actually found out that... Um, that as the film was done here, they said that uh, that Bill's character had Stockholm syndrome, because which means that if if she was held hostage, that she's gonna feel um, very ill, because she doesn't like uh, having to handle herself by actually being pr held prisoner the whole time, so she wants to get out of it before, and you know, it's gonna affect her life. I mean. <sighs> Once again, I don't buy this stuff. I really don't. I don't understand why they keep coming up with this stuff. I mean, all I wanted to enjoy is a nice adaptation of of two stories. I mean, one, the original classic, as I mentioned, and the French story. And, I, and on top of that, um, the 1946 version, as I mentioned. Um, in, in my uh, review of the 1991 film. Yeah, because there's a good adaptation right there, too, when it comes to it. But, no, it's like they just want to be PC as usual. So, there you go. I'm sorry, man. I, I just, I had to uh, rant a little bit on that, but do some nitpicking here. But, it's just, I just didn't really buy the whole idea here. But, so, I'm sorry about that. So anyway, Belle decided to meet uh, all the servants out there, which includes uh, Lumiere, the candlestick, Cotsworth, uh, the clock man, Mrs. Potts, the teapot, along with her son, Chip, the teacup. So she just wandered around, actually um, having dinner, which she refuses to have dinner with the beast. Have food for herself with Lumiere cooking and with the help of everybody, you know. Which also had the song Be Our Guest, just like the other ones. And then later she ran her around inside the West Wing, which was forbidden. So she gets to go to other places, but it had to happen. The beast actually scares him off. And she decided to run away with her father's horse, Philippe, until she got attacked by wolves and the beast had showed up to attack them and and save her life. This time around we get to see Belle and and the beast actually reacting to each other so they're trying to get along and they're trying to find out uh, the secrets behind all of this. Yeah, once again, they have snowball fights, you know, they hang around, they try to give them gifts. The Beast has showed her the surprise that he has a huge library, because yeah, after all, Bill is a bookworm, and she loves books. But also, we get to see the dark secrets behind them, where we begin, there's actually a time traveling involved in the movie, which is kind of amazing, because now we get to see what happens in the past. So this time... We get to see uh, Belle's point of view, where she actually did have a mother that actually died by a plague doctor. Yeah, so that means that uh, that she actually got killed from a plague. We also begin to find out about the beast's uh, mother too, and and she actually died uh, when he was very young, as a prince.
but there was even more uh, songs that were added to the film. Yeah, there was more to the story to this time around. They added uh, all the other background stories and other ones that follow towards it. So there you go. But meanwhile, Maurice had returned to Benouf and was unable to c convince the others that Bill was being uh, stuck inside the castle with the beast. Yeah, since he's being held prisoner. And he wanted everybody to help and get her out of there. So this time around, Gessler decided to help Maurice along with LeFou just after they started doing their their dance number. Yes, yeah, since Gessler's already being rejected as we know it. And yes, we get to see what LeFou's been doing, which yeah, this is the one that, that everybody was talking about where she where he's just going around winking everybody, mostly the the guys and, and he, even dancing around. It didn't really bother me much, so it's what it is. It's it's a it's a different uh, version of the same number as we know it about Gaston. Yeah, no one says no to Gaston, of course. So it's just I didn't really buy that. So Gaston decided to agree to help uh, Maurice uh, find her, but unfortunately they got lost and he couldn't find which way to go. So what Gaston did was. He decided to tell uh, Maurice that he wanted to marry her daughter. He refuses and the same way that she does. And So what he did was he decided to punch him, actually knock him out, and just uh, tie him into a tree until someone actually came over to Maurice and, and helped him. Yeah, because he was almost got, got attacked by wolves too. So it's like he didn't care. So that's when the whole uh, town had found out what Gaston did when Maurice had finally had showed up, only to be taking him into uh, the insane asylum. Yeah, because you know he thought that he was insane, but he wasn't. Yeah. So then we get the usual. Uh, Bell is. Is hanging around with the beast, you know, they started to fall in love with each other. They they shared a romantic dance together in the ballroom, you know, with Belle having the a beautiful and gorgeous uh, gold dress and the beast having his uh, blue suit that he has and you know they're dancing the night away you know, to the tune of the title song Beauty and the Beast that yeah, you know, this time sing by Emma Thompson as Mrs. Potts. Yeah. Until uh, we get to find out that uh, now Bill needs to save uh, her father just by viewing inside the magic mirror. And by the way, the magic mirror, as as they show it, is rather pretty small, as you could tell. I mean, the the mirror itself is small, but but the whole mirror is like big. Had a lot of silver in there. Yeah, th that was something I had problem with. So she was on her way to save her father just when um, they were already going to take him to the asylum. But then after that, uh, Bell had finally showed up and he was actually showing them proof that the beast is in the castle and he was there the whole time. And Gaston had found out about that, even though they didn't believe him. But then when he found out about the beast, that's when they decided to take the the rest of the townspeople with them to actually go all the way up to the castle to kill the beast. Which will lead to all, all the servants out there actually having a battle with each other. Yeah, so there was like a war just like how it was before. And, yeah, and it was also hilarious too. And I have to admit, I did laugh at that those scenes. <laughs> but then there, there's even one of them that actually found out who they were, and they knew about them. And and then it's up to Gaston going all the way up to the tower of the castle, having a huge fight between him and the beast, with Bell showing up. And. Which leads to Gaston's death. 
Only this time he actually shot him instead of uh, shooting an arrow like he was supposed to or even or even stabbing him. Yeah. Until uh, <clears throat> the beast actually uh, had died uh, in Bill's arms in order until he was transformed into the prince with the help of of the woman who happens to be a chantress anyway. So now everything went back to normal. All the servants had become human again, along with him. So they fell in love, and they live happily ever after. And that's the movie, A Beauty and the Beast. Now, I like the movie. I don't love it as much as everybody would, and I don't think it's better than the original 1991 animated classic, nor the 1946 version, which are all based on the French story. But I do like the film as a different adaptation of two stories per se. So. You'll get the same songs uh, that, that's all written by Alan Minkin, and it's good to see that he came back to written some more songs that I did enjoy um, with um, the late great uh, Howard Ashman, you know, who died in 1991, just before the film came out. So Alan Minkin had continued to do the score, and in fact, surprisingly, there is a familiar score in this version, and and there's added um, lyrics right there. There's even new songs that, that are in the movie, so it's perfect. Um, however, my least favorite of them all was was having to hear um, Bill singing by Emma Watson. And yeah, Emma Watson just wasn't the right choice for her to to sing. However, I thought uh, Emma Watson did a fine job playing Bill. I think she did a great job, no doubt about it. It's just her singing ability was bad. I mean, they, they actually had to auto-tune her voice, and and I hate auto-tune as much as everybody there. I don't know why they keep using auto-tune these days. It just doesn't work. But I know they use that mostly to uh, alter their voices so they don't end up sounding this bad. But they wandered around sounding more like robots, so that's how I felt. Um, I could understand maybe having auto tune for maybe for other reasons, but I still don't like the idea. They could have just thought up by having uh, a different uh, singing voice actress to actually sing to match her voice right there. I think that could have been interesting. I mean, maybe not something silly, but something better. I mean. That's what I fought. So that that was the biggest problem right there. And of course, my least favorite of them all was the singing duet of the Beauty and the Beast song, this time with Ariana Grande and John Legend. Well, John Legend did okay. Ariana Grande, on the other hand, yeah, she's a pop singer who was from the TV show Victorious. Um, she's okay as a singer, but I don't know. She's there are times where she does do that uh, the same pose. She has sort of a weird expression that she makes that I just don't like that much. <laughs> I mean, she's but I mean, granted, some of her songs are good, but I don't think she was the right choice to to actually have a singing duet with John Legend. That's for sure. I mean, they could have had someone else do her uh, singing partners with him. Or better yet, let's just have uh, Celine Dion um, with People Bryson again. Let's just take the original song from the 1991 version and let's just be safe on that. I mean, you can have Emma Thompson still singing the, the Beauty and the Beast theme as we know it. And she did a good job, by the way, uh, for Emma Thompson. And, 
Yeah, then you have a good film. But still, other than that, though, I, I think the film was uh, was fine. And I like the cast they chose. Uh, Dan Stevens, especially, he did a great job playing both the Prince and the Beast. I mean, this is different from uh, Robbie Benson's uh, performance right there, but this is good. Uh, I also love uh, you know, Ewan McGregor playing Lumiere. Ian McKillen as Cotsworth, he did a great job too. Uh, even Kevin Klein was good uh, as uh, Maurice. Of course, Luke Evans as Gaston, you could tell how neuristic he really is. and. But deep down of it, he's he's great. Uh, same goes with Josh Gag as uh, Le Fou, which I didn't buy this whole gay overtones right there. But still, he's he was good to play with. So, and after all, this is the same actor who played Olaf in in the uh, Frozen. Um, he was also good in the film. But er everybody was good in the movie. I'll, I'll give you that. So there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but there are problems that I had with the film too. And that is when the whole story seems a bit rushed in a way. I mean, I know the film had to be uh, two hours long as we know it. I mean, this is this is a, a, a two-hour film instead of uh, an hour and 30 minutes. I mean, so they had to add uh, more songs to it. They had to add more to the characters. Um, the more familiar stuff that's um, in the 1991 film is there. But uh, they seem rather rushed. They keep um, changing, switching back and forward to them. Uh, all the way around, they keep doing that. Add, added some changes, but then the rest... Uh, added some differences right there so that way we get to see more to the story than than what meets the eye so I guess that's at least it's good that they were gonna go for it but I don't think it's better than the 1991 film not at all because of that but still it's worth watching um, it's worth it mostly for the performances and the story so it still remains as as the same as usual once again it's great to see that this movie is actually doing very well at the box office It's becoming the highest grossing film ever so that's a good plus I mean out of its 160 million budget that the movie receives so it's all there so but I'm gonna say this um, if you love the the version of Beauty and the Beast as you know it, no matter how many versions we have, chances are you're going to like this movie anyway. I mean, you'll probably love it. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's worth watching. So, there you go. Um, but it's really interesting that they got uh, the screenwriters um, who had worked on other projects, so at least they try to keep it that way. So there you go. So it, it does have a great direction. Um, great CGI right there. I mean, they did a, some good time here. And the creation of the beast uh, looks amazing right there. I even love some of the added songs that they got. Uh, including the one with the beast. I thought that worked, in, in my opinion. Just uh, don't be aware by all this uh, controversy that this film was receiving. Yeah, with the gay overtones and all that. It's not going to hurt the film. I mean, that's just Disney and their ways. I mean, they're trying to ban this movie too. Including the, the feeder in, in Alabama. Which, I really don't buy that. So I'm sorry. The whole film didn't hurt it for me. So, why, why should I even care for that? It's just... It doesn't make any sense. But either way, um, it's worth watching. But for those who, who don't want to deal with it, then that's fine by me. But still, you have a good time. So anyway, I give the film three and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.